Those who have come to celebrate the joining together in marriage of Cassandra Ann Grebus and James Patrick Andrew Twisdale, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. You may be seated. The greeting of the Apostle becomes our greeting as we too have gathered to worship God and to seek guidance for our lives bound together by our faith in Christ Jesus. As a people of faith, we gather to witness the covenant vows of marriage Patrick and Cassie make before God and to pray for God's blessings upon them. Each of us are pleased at the choice both Cassie and Patrick have made in the other, none more so than the family. I ask Vince Grebus, the father of the bride, to respond on behalf of the family do you join in extending your blessings upon this marriage? We do. Thank you. If y'all will stand next to each other. Colossians 3, 12 through 17 reads, As God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love which binds them together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts since as members of one body you are called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whatever in deed 
or word, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. We participate in several ways by our presence here today. Those of us who are married are reminded of the vows that we once made to our spouse. In observing this ceremony today, we remember our own weddings and listening to the seriousness of the promises that they make to each other, <clears throat> we are challenged to examine the states of our own marriages. And for those who are considering marriage, in celebrating with Cassie and Patrick, we're invited to examine our understanding of marriage and the seriousness of the vows they make to one another. By paying attention to their promises, we are offered the opportunity to grow in our appreciation of the covenant relationship between a wife and a husband. And finally, we show by our presence our support for Cassie and Patrick. We rejoice in their love for each other and in their desire to be united in marriage. Celebrating the sacredness of their commitment, we affirm their openness to the nature of God as the one who will unite them as wife and husband. As we enter into this time of worship, we join in prayer for their happiness and well-being. We remind them that they are not alone. The vows they make to one another are not being said in isolation. We share in their belief that God will join them together, provide them with his presence in their life together, sealing their vows of marriage with God's blessing and peace. We covenant with them that we will not only pray for their wedding today, but also we will seek God's presence for their marriage in the years to come. As a symbol of our praying with them and for them, will you join me in praying the prayer our Lord taught us to pray? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Cassie and Patrick, having considered the sacredness of marriage and an awareness that you are making these vows before God and your friends and family, do you enter into this union freely and without reservation? We do. If you'll step forward just a little. You know, perhaps no passage of scripture informs us of love any better than Paul's letter to the Corinthians. He wrote, love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful. It is not arrogant or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It doesn't rejoice in wrong, but rejoices in the right. Love bears all things, believes all things hopes all things and endures all things. Love never ends. So faith, hope, love abide these three, but the greatest of these is love. Marriage is a relationship by which God provides the husband and wife with a companion with whom they may share the mysteries of faith, hope, and love. God is the source of life, the creator of relationships, the one who unifies us and makes us one, who gives us all the love, joy, and strength we need in a Christ-centered marriage. Faith in God provides resources to nurture and care for the other, to be overcome obstacles, and to grow deeper in your union as a husband and wife. In our premarital sessions, we talked about how in a Christian marriage, God is the source of love for the other. To love the wife, God gives the love to the husband. To love the husband, God provides through the wife. In mutual submission to God, 
Husbands and wives become instruments through which God loves the other. No marriage, then, should lack God's presence. It is in God's presence that we find insight and wisdom that we need to understand and truly appreciate each other. God's presence gives us the strength to love each other to greater and deeper spiritual heights. God's presence teaches us how to practice humility, putting others first, valuing one beyond ourselves. God's presence inspires us to love as love was meant to be. It is in God's presence that we find unconditional love is one of God's greatest gifts to us and one of life's most wonderful virtues. Cassie and Patrick, I urge you to pattern your love for one another after God's love for you. Seek God's presence in your life together. It is in God's presence that you will find motivation and endurance for every storm, meaning and peace, for every joy-filled moment. There is so much more that God wants to show both of you. John 1.16 tells us, from the fullness of God's grace, we receive blessing upon blessing. And I remind you, this is just the beginning. It is not the end. Your journey starts today. There's so much more ahead of you than just this moment. In time, God will grow your love to greater heights and bless your union more abundantly than you could even imagine. It is my hope that as you come to know the joy of marriage, you will become more aware of how much God loves you both. Remember, today is only a wedding but it takes a lifetime to build a marriage. Will you hand your bouquet and turn and face one another, holding hands with mine. Let us pray together. Gracious God, we are honored to join Cassie and Patrick in praying that you would bestow, bestow your blessings upon their marriage. In this holy moment, as they repeat their vows before you, entering a covenant relationship with each other, we ask that you would seal the commitment they make with one another in your perfect love. Create in them a union that is pure and without defect. Protect them from trials. Endow them with endurance. Give them your wisdom that they may know the blessings of deeper love. Give them insight and patience to live their life together in a marriage worthy of your intention. And may the success of their union bring honor to your name. May the success of their marriage inspire others to faithfulness and commitment to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Okay, still holding hands and looking at each other. You will now say your vows. Patrick, do you take Cassie to be your wife? Do you commit yourself to her self-fulfillment as a person and to her usefulness in God's kingdom? And do you promise to love, honor, trust, and serve her in sickness and in health and adversity and prosperity and to be true and faithful to her so long as you both shall live? I do. Cassie, do you take Patrick to be your husband? Do you commit yourself to his self-fulfillment as a person and to his usefulness in God's kingdom? And do you promise to love, honor, trust, and serve him in sickness and in health, in adversity and prosperity, and to be true and faithful to him so long as you shall live? I do. The wedding ring is a symbol of marriage in at least two ways. The purity of the material symbolizes the purity of your love for each other, and the unending circle symbolizes the unending vows you're taking. As a vow of your, as a token of your vows, you will give and receive the rings. Patrick, you will give the ring first. If you will slide that on her hand and repeat after me. Cassie, with this ring, 
Cassie with this ring. I pledge my life. I pledge my life. And love to you. And my love to you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. And Cassie, you will give the ring and repeat after me. Patrick with this ring. Patrick with this ring. I pledge my life. I pledge my life. And love to you. And love to you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. I remind you of the words from the book of Ruth. Words of covenant love and unfailing commitment. Where it is written, don't urge me to leave you or turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. And now as a symbol of their being joined together as one, Cassie and Patrick will light the unity candle. Now we gotta read it again. Yes. <laughs> We'll just, yeah. You just like the one in the middle. take a bit. That's good. There you go. Patrick and Cassie, before I officially pronounce you husband and wife, let me tell you how proud we are of you. Please remember that what are joined together today are more than a husband and a wife. What are joined together today are families. You don't leave behind the love that has nurtured and encouraged you to this point in your life. Don't forget the importance of your family's legacy. You are who you are because of how they loved you. They are there for you and you will always be a part of them. Patrick and Cassie, in Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. God has plans for you both. God will nurture each of you, and you together will bless many. May God bless you now and always as you begin this commitment together. Now. Since you've made these commitments before God in this assembly, by the authority of God as a minister of Jesus Christ, I now recognize Cassie Grebus and Patrick Twisdale are now husband and wife. What therefore God has joined together, let no person separate. You may kiss your bride. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and forevermore. Amen. Friends, I present to you Mr. and Mrs. Patrick Twisdale.